Hi everyone, April Cox here. I am with an author of my self-publishing made simple course. Um, Rula, welcome and thank you for allowing me to record this for others. So the question no problem. that Rula had today was, how do you go about getting really good keywords? So Rula's book um, has a lot to do with anti-bullying and we're gonna just walk through some steps together that will help you understand the process that I go through. And some of these things you can do yourself. Others, if you need help, just I can help you along with it. The first thing I do is I want to find the best of the best books in your niche. So by finding really good categories, like emotions and feelings, um, friendship, things like that, you may be able to really vet out what are the really great books that are doing well. Middle school, the worst years of my life. So I just kind of make, make note of what are these books that are really relevant and try to, first, what, first thing I do is come in here and grab the ASIN. Um, what I'm going to do here, though, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this keywords link, and this opens up Helium, which um, is my favorite tool to use to get really powerful keywords. Um, what this specific to piece of the tool, now, now Helium has a ton of different features. It, this feature that I just clicked on, which is called Cerebro, is a reverse ASIN lookup. What that means is you're, you're putting this keyword here so you can see it pre-filled that, that uh, ASIN that I put there. And it will take that ASIN and show you everything that it is indexed for. So if you've got an anti-bullying book that is like number one in a number of categories, it's doing phenomenally, you throw and you say, gee, if I only knew what they were indexed for, like what are their keywords? Um, that is exactly what this reverse ASIN lookup does within Helium. It also gives you this uh, word, word cloud kind of thing. And it shows you the type, the books that it is typically, um, you know, frequently bought with. So these are uh, other thing, other middle school parts of the series. I love Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Um, so I'm going to take that key, that ASIN, and I'm going to say I want that one too. So let's just say you end up with three or five that are okay. amazing books, right? And you put them here. I'm going to go and grab one more, which is uh, Juice Box Bully, which I know is because I have an anti-bullying book, um, and I've done this before. I just know that there are certain ones that I really that really are more applicable for me. Right. Uh, empowering kids to stand up to others. This is Juice Box Bully. Um, so I am going to just go and grab the ASIN from this one as well. Um, and then I'm going to go in here and add it. And I'm sure if we poked around longer, we could we could get um, other books. I'm going to do a new search instead of loading from my history because I want to actually show you the whole process. Now, looking at these three, we see a total of 15,000 keywords. Of them, 14, and this is specific for this one, right? For, this one has 14,000 organic keywords. They're not paying for any keywords. If, if they were, you'd see the number of sponsored keywords. Um, and it says Amazon recommended keywords. So it gives you this list, um, which can be really overwhelming. People are like, okay, what the heck do I do with this? Why is this important? Well, what I will typically do is I'll come in here and say, look, I want a minimum of 500 searches a month. I want a score, and this is their Cerebro internal score for, um, for this book. Let me just fix this. Um, so, Five, I want the score to be at least 500 and I can go into, you know, helium and scoring and things like that at another time, another video. Um, but then I go into advanced filters and one of the things that I also want to make sure is that I don't have 
a high number of competing products because if there's a lot of competition on a keyword, you're not going to rank well. So right. I want that magic of high volume searches, lower competition so that I can really do well with regard to, so now I'm down to 652 keywords because I filtered them out. The tool itself shows me um, the keyword phrase. Okay, so Diary of a Wimpy Kid is very, is very um, popular. It gets a lot of search volume, but I think, right, so there's a number of these that are um, specific to Diary of a Wimpy Kid. In the, the free version, you can't order by categories. So, or you can't like click on something and say, show me, you know, in this order. I want the lowest number of competing products. Let's see. Now, April, I think Helium, isn't it, don't you have to have an Amazon seller's account? No. No, but if you do have one, you uh, there's some extra features that it does. Oh, okay. You want to connect it to your Amazon seller account, it does all kinds of like extra fancy stuff. Uh, okay. That I have probably not even scratched the surface with at this point. Um, so if I was just looking at like really low competition keywords, Miss Markley leaves no reader behind. And, you know, some of these are really diary of a we we wimpy kid deep end. There's only 23 people that are using this as a keyword. And look at the number of search volume that it has. Uh, the Cerebro score, the higher the score, the better. So this is, looks like a really good keyword. Right. And one of the things that I love about this tool when I'm looking at their feedback, I can click on this arrow. And what does it do? It takes me to that exact search term on Amazon. And I can look at, you know, who's coming up for that keyword, like what other, what other books are using it. Um, the other tool that I really love is called KD Spy. Again, it is a plugin for Chrome. So when I, you, what I love about KD Spy is you can see, here's Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Deep End. It's got all of the things, uh, all of the people that are using, or say here's the top 20 that are using this keyword. You are able to see a lot of information about them. For example, what's the price that they're charging? What's their number of monthly sales? What's their monthly revenue? So you can be looking at your niche and you can be seeing what are they're making, what they're making every month, basically. And this all comes from backend data from Amazon. So the deep end is making, um, it's got an estimated 10,000 sales a month. And the monthly revenue it generated from that book is $128,000 a month. So you can see a lot of information about these different things that you're doing. You can also see at the bottom, this is Kindle versus book data. Oh. So it looks at the Kindle side. You can also click over here and take a look at the book side. You know, so now um, these, it's pulling the data from, from print books instead of Kindle. And you see that it's slightly different. There's a, a lower number that are, that are using that keyword. It still gives you the revenue from the print side of, the, of that. Um, it shows you the number of, re of reviews they have, the sales rank. Now, if you look at average monthly revenue, you can see on average on the print side, the, these books make about $10,000 a month. Um, average sales rank for these books is really high, meaning, you know, it's not going to be that hard to get in here and, you know, most of us can rank under a million. Uh, so if, if I saw this was like 500, I'd be like, okay, chances of me getting to the top 500 and being able to compete with these guys is probably not the greatest. Right. But a million, sure, I could probably deal with that. Um, it also allows you to jump into the word cloud and you can see, okay, of all of these that you're looking at, what are some of the, the words that are used more often in their descriptions, in their keywords. So you can see the word cloud. 
you can also, if I go back here, um, what I love is this um, red, yellow, green, right? So they, they give you a stoplight kind of feature for popularity of a book, potential of a book, and competition. So we already know that it's great with regard to competition. We could see that in the other tool, in the Helium, that there's not a lot of competitors out there using this term. Right. Potential, it says caution, the revenue potential of books under this keyword looks a little average. Well, if average is roughly $10,000 a month. We'll take it. I'll take it. So uh, popularity, there's only a small number of books performing well for this keyword. And this is because there's only a small number of, of books actually using the keyword. So given the high volume, like this, this keyword tool doesn't tell me how many searches a month it gets, but I get that in Helium. Okay. This one gives me, you know, these the stoplight features. It gives me a lot of incredible information. It even has an export. Like if I say, gee, I really would love to hang on. Like this is a great keyword. I want to export all the information. You can use the keyword, this tool to export all of this information for yourself. Um, so this is a, a phenomenal uh, keyword phrase. I can look at it here for a Kindle. It's green across the board. And if you look at, at the average monthly revenue on the Kindle side for these keywords, um, on, and I know, yes, we're looking at really popular books because it's those books that are under this series that are actually using the keyword. But it's got, you know, pretty high monthly revenue. Um, you might see here, okay, it's only, the average price is only $9 for these books. So... Um, but again, this is the ebook. But it's, so, yeah, it's a Kindle. So it's nine dollars for ebook. So you know, I don't. Um, we've got the Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Invisible Boy. Sure, sounds like an amazing anti-bullying book to me. Um, the Jelly Donut Difference, Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life. Now this is a movie. Um, so then you have to think, okay, this is a really applicable uh, thing for anti-bullying, but it is a movie. Do I think that people searching for this movie, if they happen to see my book there as like a sponsored ad, would they perhaps think, oh, I'm interested in that. Let me go take a look at it. Perhaps. And sometimes, you know, if I'm not sure, I'll just leave it there, put it, throw it into an ad. Some of these things are going to surprise me. Some of the things I think are going to do really well don't. And then I just get rid of them. And others, I'm like, wow, who would have thought that that would have been, you know, such a great keyword for me. So it's a, a part of it is just getting through, um, like here, it's chapter one and two DVD set. Somehow this book or this DVD is using some of these keywords. It's getting a very high search volume. So it got, you know, pulled into my keyword list. If I'm going to go through and look you know, one by one by one, I might want to delete some of these. Sometimes I go through that. Sometimes I don't, because if I'm looking at this, I've got 652 keywords all around anti-bullying. Um, and if I don't want to bother going through every single one, what I'll do is I'll just export this. I'll export it. And, and I love that from Helium, I can just export things. I'll export it into Excel. I'll copy those keywords. No, I'll put this aside. I'll copy those keywords into an ad and then just let them run and see what happens. If it's not a good keyword, I might get impressions, but I'm only going to pay for clicks. So who cares if it's not a good keyword and nobody clicks on my book when they search for that keyword? Right. It doesn't hurt me. So I just click Excel, export to Excel. And here you go. Let me explain a little bit about each of these columns. So we have the, the keyword phrase, the Cerebro score, and you know, in Helium, if you wanna pay some, pay some attention to the Cerebro score and go, they'll explain to you how they come up with the number. All you really need to know is the higher the score, the better the perceived value of that keyword is. It has the number of searches per month. So I'm just gonna do this. 
searches, hold on, enable editing, just to make it easier for you when you're going back and looking at this stuff later, uh, searches per month, I'll do that, so that way there's no confusion. Number of competing products, so you can see, and I think I, I limited it to 600, you know, I wanted no more than 600 competing products, because and I would say I usually like to keep it around 500 because that's where the competition ends up being green. Like, okay, you're good. You're, you don't have that many people competing for that same keyword. The CPR eight day giveaways with this, this is kind of a confusing column. What it means is uh, sell this many in eight days to rank on page one. That's what it really means. So you can kind of get a sense of, wow, if I do well, if I sell 40 in eight days, I can be number one uh, or on the first page for this term. Right. Okay. So I'm just, I'm changing the column tit titles to make it a little easier. Sponsored ASINs. So this tells you how many people are paying for that keyword. So the Invisible Boy by Trudy Lugwig, that exact phrase is being paid for, um, for, by 40 people, okay? Should you use any words that you have in your title or subtitle? Um, or, is it, or is that given? The, you know, your, your subtitle and your title and all of that are, are going to be um, ranked for your book. I mean, they're gonna be indexed for your book. Right. So these other ones, uh, and you can bid on, on those terms so that other people don't grab, like if you've got a great anti-bullying book, Let's just take the example of these uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. If when, right. he, if when somebody searched for Diary of a Wimpy Kid, my book comes up every time, that's kind of odd. Like I've just hijacked all their traffic. So they may oh, want okay. to pay to make sure that nobody can hijack their traffic. Hijack, right. You know what I mean? So that's, uh, it's something that can easily be um, helpful. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save as, I'm going to call it uh, anti-bullying bullying keywords for, for Rula. And I'm just going to throw it on my downloads. So this is kind of what I do. I'm a bit of a geek with analysis. I like to go and search and get a number of really great keywords. I test them out in my ads, see what works, what doesn't work. I've been putting in a, a resource library of a bunch of stuff that I've done to share with others to, that you know might be helpful for them. So one of the things that I've been doing is coming up with really amazing keyword lists that people could benefit from. So I'll give you an example. And Rula, I'm going to give this to you because you and I have been working together. You're in my work group. We've been talking about keywords. And um, I, I just think that this would be really helpful for you. This is your thousand words? One thousand keywords that have a minimum of um, 700 searches a month and has a maximum it has no more than 500 competing products, which means it's going to end up being green across the board, uh, right. typically with all these. I have, this is like some of my best work ever, and it's all around the children's books. And you can see some great, you know, what I would expect people to do is not just, you know, grab them. Although if it was me, I'm going to take this, I'm going to throw it into an ad for, for my anti-bullying book but it's not just anti-bullying stuff. I would, I'm gonna throw it in because you're allowed to have a thousand keywords in it per ad, and I just wanna see what happens when I throw them all in and which ones of these keywords that are amazing keyword phrases, and you can see Aesop's Fables for Children with Pictures, uh, Beginning Piano Books for Children, 1183 searches per month. I can think of two or three children's books that I know that are, you know, music books. Right. It would be an amazing phrase for her. Um, Curious George board books. They have 924 um, searches per month, and they have very little competition for that keyword. 
So I've done a ton of research. I spent many hours pulling this stuff together and I'm going to give it to you. So, and anybody else that is interested in, you know, getting access to some of this, I'm also adding it to my resource library. Most people would think that you just need Amazon uh, or even publisher Rocket. Mm -hmm. And this goes far beyond that. So I would think that you would need all three to maximize and to get the best because that, what, what that's what a is really, me? really great point. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, no, publisher okay. rocket. I do have and use quite often publisher rocket. It's KDP rocket is an amazing tool. It, I do use it whenever I do analysis, but I use it a little bit differently. If I am looking for competitor analysis book for kids, let's just see what this does. So this I kind of find interesting. This is valuable because remember we were looking around trying to get, you know, what, what are the best selling books in this, in this um, niche. So by put, by going into the competition analyzer, it's going to show you the ones that are, you know, highly ranked. Um, and also give you the ability to say, Hey, show me what categories you can kind of click in the price. It shows this daily sales, monthly sales for this book, which is cool. You can click, check it out and actually go through the, through the, um, the actual listing on Amazon. You can also click unleash the categories. And now this shows all of the categories that have, in this anti-bullying phrase, this shows all the categories that are being used by these anti-bullying books. Now, if you're looking for categories that may fit with your book, what a great way to do this, like to just pull category information, and then it allows you also to export the categories. Now, maybe this thrillers and suspense has nothing to do with, um, you know, your hippos anti-bullying, but Friendship does, bullies does, emotions and feelings. So it gives you some really good places right. to look and you can copy these categories. So this is a positive thing with KDP Rocket. Let me just go back for a couple of other things here. So you can export competition data if you want to. And you can also do an AMS keyword search, which is so anti-bullying book for kids. Now this is helpful. Um, and sometimes when, you know, if I've done a lot of stuff on helium, I've used keywords and I'm like, okay, now I'm kind of, I've done everything, but now I, I just want to refresh something. I want to do something a little different. I might come into this uh, keyword search here, put a phrase that, you know, usually you have maybe five or 10 really good keyword phrases that you will find your book does the best for. Um, so if I, if I have this and I want to do it for my book, not the ebook, and I click go get them rocket, it's going to go out there. It's going to get all of these um, phrases, but it's also going to populate all of the books that have, that are within these categories that have used this keyword um, names of the books, names of the authors, and it gives you this great keyword list that you can export and try in an Amazon ad. So I do like this, and I'm going to export it for you. So here now I'm going to save this on my downloads, and I'll send that to you as well. And you can, so I exported it all here. So who knows when you try, so, so, so I might just try, see what Publisher Rocket did, does, and I'll make one, one um, ad for Publisher Rocket keywords that I got, another ad for the ones that I, that I got out of Picked up, uh, right. the other, because who knows? You just, I mean, it's all about trial and error. Um, what I really love about Publisher Rocket more than anything, um, it's the absolute best out there tool for finding really great categories. Um, and to know exactly the competition that you have in your categories so that you can become off a best-selling author. Because if you find those categories that have less competition, um, they're, you know, more niche, more targeted for your niche, then you will be able to rank 
and become a number one new release and then a bestseller in that category, in that Amazon category. So it is really phenomenal for that. And maybe I'll save that for another video where I'll, I'll okay. talk about the KDP categories and what I've done. Right. That. So I'm going to stop sharing, uh, stop recording um, for anyone before I do for anyone who wants some additional help from me. Um, check out underneath the video and you've got I've got a, a link for a free consult So I'm able to chat with you about your specific needs and help you with some of this if you need some help. Take care <laughs>